you, sort of uh, agriculture, insurance, transportation, you know. Are you near North Dakota? You know North Dakota up there, I heard? We're directly north of North Dakota, yeah. All right, so North Dakota's doing okay compared to the uh, American debt. Uh, for some reason, they got 0.0, or this is what I heard through news sources, that it's 0.9% for unemployment, and uh, their sovereign debt's different to everyone else's because they own their bank, I heard. Is that correct? They may own some kind of bank, but that's not the reason they're doing well. In general, uh, the Canadian West and uh, the American uh, Northwest or the American uh, Midwest, uh, like North Dakota, they we're doing well because because of uh, because of the, of the commodity boom. The mm. Same reason that Australia has been relatively sheltered mm. uh, from the recession. The resources, uh, yeah, yeah, uranium and uh, you got the tar sands up there too, I think, Henry. That's right, the tar sands in Alberta. So, uh, mm. and they're also horrible, horrible. And, and you're also selling asbestos to India. I heard that. Yeah, too. that comes out of that comes out of Quebec. But yeah, that's yeah. that's true too. Yeah. It's, uh, so with sovereign uh, sovereignty, like um, I think Canadians are, are pretty well onto the sovereignty thing. Do you think that um, Australians are still uh, still fluoridated and are still a bit um, behind behind the eight ball? But for yeah. a Commonwealth state ca in Canada. Um, are people aware of the sovereignty of the Canadians that they are owned by the Crown Privy Council? No, I don't think Canadians are any more conscious than Australians are. Okay. <laughs> Shall we? Are we going to talk about uh, Julia Gillard now, or do you want to talk about the sovereign debt? All right. Well, we can talk about. We'll talk about sovereign debt, and then we'll get on to Julia Gillard, our Prime Minister, who's very yeah, interesting. Sure. He's uh, very interesting with the toilet vampire. But we'll go on to sovereign debt. Right. Well, I don't have to tell you that, uh, you know, about the big sovereign debt crisis in uh, Europe mm. and in the United States, right? Yep. Like today, the markets are down in Canada, 200, and in the States, you know, 200, the Dow's down two or 300 points, and wow. gold was down 50 bucks, you know? Mm. Now, a lot of, uh, a lot of us uh, conspiracy, conspiracy people believe that there's some kind of, uh, a refuge in gold, and a lot of us are buying gold and silver. Uh, is that true in Australia too? Yeah, that's that's very true here. Yeah, uh, but I, I've been one of the uh, very few voices that uh, I, I've written that in in a in a crash or in a crisis, uh, cash is king, and uh, that certainly seems to be borne out. So I haven't been caught in this uh, downdraft in terms of the price of gold, and I'm waiting for it to go down further before I buy some. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, in a panic, uh, cash is king. People will there's margin calls. People will sell anything, including their gold. It's very, very risky to get into gold too soon. It's uh, so I I would just advise your listeners to be. I'm not an economic or a, you know guru or anything, but so far I've been right. This whole sovereign debt problem is is all because. Uh, Currency is created in the form of a debt to the central, these Illuminati bankers. Mm. And um, all the problems of the world, in my opinion, are due to the fact that they can create money out of thin air. And, and so what they need to do is lend it to someone and then uh, against some collateral, and then they need to foreclose on the collateral. Follow me? Yep. So their, their whole... Uh, raison d'etre in life is to take this money they create of nothing and uh, and transform it into uh, a hard assets, real assets. Yeah, debt for like assets. Like resources swap. and real estate and and corporations, you name it, right? Yeah. So what so what they do, you know, what they do is they uh, they get interest rates down low and, and this way they can lend out a whole bunch of it. And then... Uh, and then they raise the interest rates, and then there's a depression, and then they can foreclose on everything. And uh, that seems to me the cycle they're into. They're they're into now. They're into the foreclosing uh, cycle, where they, you know, where people are, where they can just uh, uh, basically take the collateral. Yeah, they can just scoop it up, and then they use the flip side of that to get the governments to tax people. So eventually, it whittles away whatever equity they have in something. Because they're constantly trying to pay the interest, pay the taxes on whatever they have, and in the end, if they raise interest rates, they basically get robbed of whatever equity that's left because they get foreclosed upon. That's right. 
and you know what what they've what they've done in uh, Greece and to a lesser extent in Italy is just a, a a repetition of what they've been doing in the third world in Indonesia and other places for uh, for decades, mm. and that is. That was described by uh, John Perkins in that book, Economic Hitman, where they essentially get all the, for example, they got Greece to, uh, you know, buy a whole bunch of uh, submarines and airplanes and build a new uh, subway and new airport. They, all this infrastructure and all these uh, uh, military uh, hardware, they lent Greece the money. The, the, the money they lent Greece was created, part of it was created out of thin air, right? Now, uh, now... They want uh, Greece to repay it, and uh, you know, and uh, th now now they they basically want their pound of flesh, uh, where they're gonna you know where they're taking ownership of Greek uh, resources, Greek islands, you name it, and uh, that's the way they work. And what's happening in Greece, I su I suspect is going to happen to everywhere in the uh, first world. Mm -hmm. Greece is the first first world country that they've done this to. Before it was just the third world. It used to be a huge sucking machine where they, their whole purpose in life is to suck all the wealth out of the world, all the, uh, nur all the nurturant, uh, all the nutrition, so that they're a cancer, so there, there's nothing left uh, for anything else to live. It's 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 fleecing, and then uh, it's interesting that Iceland went through that as uh, that situation as well, where. Uh, the Illuminati bankers uh, lend them, bought this electricity, uh, electrical company or whatever so, and it, it was costing him so much, so they put him in debt. But the good thing about Iceland, they said, well, we're not paying you back, stuff is. And they nearly had a referendum in Greece, but obviously he went to the G20 and uh, Prime Minister or the President of Greece, um, he, he stepped down. So it's the people's power, I guess, to uh, get rid of these bankers, wouldn't you say there, Henry? Absolutely, uh I think the people of Egypt are very courageous because they're they're out in the squares and they're they're making their demands clear. Mm -hmm. They're ripping out concrete. Not, what do you think of the Occupy movement there, Henry? Do you think it's co-opted or do you think it's it's all too organised or what do you think? I think the um, I'm, I'm afraid that the Occupy movement is uh, doesn't really represent a cross section of uh, of discontent. It's it seems to be the usual uh, suspects on the on the left alone. Mm. Uh, the unions seem to be behind it, and uh, behind them is George Soros. And so, uh, you know, I'm 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 a little. Uh, but, I would have more faith in the Occupy movement if they uh, if they put nationalizing the Fed up at the top of their demands, yep. and they put an investigation into 9/11 yep. right below that. You know. That's that would really challenge the establishment. But I mean, right now, they they don't have, they seem to be quite nebulous. They don't seem to know what they want. Uh, you know, there's there's a segment of the population that you know will will come out and protest because they're just they're just disgruntled for for good or bad reasons. Mm, Soros is no mensch, is he? I mean, he he's funding We Are Change and and all these other groups, and really kind is he, of is he funding We Are Change. I believe he is. Oh wow! Absolutely. Oh, we are change. Um, no, actually, I don't. He's funding move on. Oh, sorry, move on. Yeah, move on. Yeah, yeah we are yeah. change is Luke Radowski. Um, yeah. the sorry. movement that yeah, happened. Yeah, we are change seems to be legitimate. It's, a, uh, it's associated with Alex Jones. It seems to yeah. be a little more legitimate. Yeah. What do you, What do you think of Alex Jones himself? Whilst we're on the subject, I, you know, I like Alex Jones. Uh, you know, he doesn't like me because I I post on uh, rents, mm -hmm. but uh, and he and rents are having a. Uh, a feud, but uh, mm. I like Alex Jones. I think he's doing good work. I judge people by by you know judge them by their fruits, mm. and um, he seems to be doing good work. If he has a hidden agenda, I'm not sure what it is because well, he seems of... to be, he seems to be in the face of the central bankers constantly. Mm. Yeah, he does. He has pushed, and he does push for nine one one investigation, which is a big investigation yeah. that needs I'm, to be done. For that. I'm I'm not a fan of, of Alex Jones at all, but just interesting to get your take on it. Well, tell me, tell me what your take on Jones is. Uh, well, I, I find I find Jones quite entertaining, um, and you know, and I like the stuff that he does, especially with the nine one one investigation and everything else. I, I read a lot of stuff that you know that he, it could be you know right wing cabalisters with the the Koch brothers, you know, it could be that, and I hear all this sort of stuff. But I think 
him pushing for the uh, a lot of people say he's not giving out much remedy um, but I think that he's woken a lot of people up and a lot of people who have woken up through thanks to Alex Jones um, have gone off on different things but he has done a, a world of good of waking a lot of people up so I, I, I commend him on that it's quite possible that you know when I read that uh, the John uh, was it the John Birch Society was uh, financed by the Rockefellers yeah you know that's a that's a that's pretty uh, startling because they they also you know back in uh, the in the sixties and seventies they woke a lot of people up too yeah so it does seem like the uh, the it does seem like the Illuminati bankers for some reason mm. want to want some people to know what they're up to. Yeah, that's what I think Jones is. I think personally, I'm, I'm a bit different to Jack. I think that he's being, uh, he's being well funded. It's well orchestrated. It's definitely uh, his controlled opposition there. And one of the things that I dislike most about Alex Jones is that he's, uh, he makes intelligent people, um, when they look at it, like he's a conspiracy nutcase because of how he rants and raves. So instantly his demeanor switches people off. A lot of his message might may be good, and he may be uh, harping on some good points, but he's definitely um, seems to be the mainstream mm. kind of researcher or conspiracy guy go to that seems to be channeling a lot of this information. Mm. And so, a lot of these figureheads that I see at the top of all of these things are really uh, kind of controlled oppositions to their own various degrees. Well, I think what you said, Henry, that maybe it could be co-opted that the whole 911 was so blatantly in your face mm. um, that it could be a um, co-opted to make people wake up and that they're doing this for a reason. Um, we should hold on, Henry. We, we'll go back for another 15 minutes after this. Uh, we'll hold on with Henry McCow. Um, we'll be back after this break. If you can hold on for a song there for us, Henry. Talk about Julia Gillard after. If only we could have the shorter working day the shorter working week, the shorter working life with more time to realize our full human potential. This is Linton Quasi Johnson and you're listening to Radio Skid Row on 88.9 FM. Who are you carrying all those bricks for anyway? God? Is that it? God? Well, I tell you. Let me give you a little inside information about God. God likes to watch. He's a prankster. Think about it. He gives man instincts. He gives you this extraordinary gift, and then what does he do? I swear, for his own amusement, his own private cosmic gag reel, he sets the rules in opposition. It's the goof of all time. Look, but don't touch. Touch, but don't taste. Taste, don't swallow. <laughs> and while you're jumping from one foot to the next, what is he doing? He's laughing his sick fucking ass off. He's a tight ass. He's a sadist. He's an absentee landlord. Worship that never. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, is that it? Why not? I'm here on the ground with my nose in it since the whole thing began. I've nurtured every sensation man has been inspired to have. I cared about what he wanted and I never judged him. Why? Because I never rejected him in spite of all his imperfections. I'm a fan of man! I'm a humanist. Maybe the last humanist. Who in their right mind, Kevin, could possibly deny the 20th century was entirely mine? All of it, Kevin! All of it. Mine. I'm peeking, Kevin. It's my time now. It's 